Hi, this is Dion from FocusChemistry.com. Today we're going to talk about a particular question on the topic of kinetics. Uh, this particular question is a it's an old question from Raffles Junior College, 2000. Uh, but this question is very interesting because um, the nature of the question asked is very different from what we're seeing today. And uh, we're going to go through the question and see what the question is about. Uh, this question is, uh, is a kinetic study of a particular reaction between A and B to give you C. There are three experiments conducted where these three data are co collected. The first is the initial pressures of A and B, initial partial pressures of A and B. Second column, we see the initial pressure of A. And the third column is the total pressure of all the reactants and products at the 25th second. Right. And I'm going to denote the initial pressure of A and B as P initial, the total pressure at 25th second as P total. And we're going to take a look at the first part of the question. The first part of the question uh, asks you to ask the students to show uh, this relationship, which is PC equals to P initial minus P total. Now, PC is the partial pressure of C at 25th second. So this question actually asks students to relate the pressure of C at the 25th seconds to the initial pressures of A and B minus of the total pressures of A, B, and C at the 25th second. So let's take a look at how we're going to solve the first part. Now, if you take a look at the reaction, which is A plus B gives you C, right? Initially, what we have is that the pressure of A, the partial pressure of A, we're going to denote it as PAI, which is the initial pressure of A, and we have the initial pressure of B, which is called PAI. The initial pressure of C is assumed to be zero because there's no information given about the initial pressure of C. Now, this table will look somewhat similar to what we've learned in chemical equilibrium, but this table can be used for any time frame. It doesn't need to be a reversible reaction. It can be irreversible. So this is initial pressure. This is the change in the pressure from the beginning till the time, which is the 25th second. Now, 25th second is the time frame we're going to stop looking at the reaction because the total pressure here is at 25th second. The partial pressure C here is also at 25th second. So the time frame we're going to look at is from the initial time goes zero to the 25th second. Now, initial pressure of A and B are PAI and PBI. And according to mole ratio, we find that if P amount of A has reacted, then the molar ratio is 1 is to 1 A and B. So the amount of P that's reacted is also called P, right? Minus P, that's the amount of P, uh, B reacted. And the amount of C that's formed is plus P. Uh, you notice the ratio here is 1 is to 1 is to 1. So the amount of P, A, the amount of A reacted is the same as the amount of B reacted, same as the amount of C reacted. Now you notice that we're using pressure here instead of moles. Uh, the reason why we can do that is because we learned from ideal gas law, which is P V equals to NRT, that pressure is proportional to moles, right? So using mole ratio, we can use pressure ratio. The ratio will be exactly the same. If we were to find out the time, uh, the, the, the pressure at the 25th second, then the amount of A left is PAI minus P, the amount of B left is PBI minus P, and the amount of C that's left is P. And these are the numbers we're going to have. You notice that in this question, it states that the pressure of C at the 25th second is called PC. So we're going to do this. We're going to call this pressure as of C at 25th second as PC. So you notice that the change is also PC, and everything is related to PC. So the term PC comes into our picture now, which is something we need to prove in our expression, PC. Right? And the sum of these three pressures, which is PAI minus PC, that's for pressure of A at 25th second, PBI minus PC, this is the pressure of B at the 25th second, plus PC, which is the pressure of C at the 25th second, is equal to the P total. What is P total? P total is the total pressure at the 25th second. And you notice that in this expression, the PCs are found in the expression P total also. You take a look, P total, PC. What you need to do is just to bring in the P initial. If you were to simplify this, you notice there's minus PC, minus PC, plus PC. So one of them will cancel off, right? You get PAI plus PBI minus PC equals to P total. And the last step is to express PC. Bring PC to the right, bring P total to the left. You get PAI plus PBI minus P total. And what is PAI plus PBI? This is basically P initial minus P total. You compare this relationship with this relationship. They're actually very similar. So therefore, the first part is done. right? We have actually shown that PC is P initial minus P total. Okay, so that's for part A. 
Now let's take a look at part B. Now part B is something that's going to be very interesting. This is the one that is really interesting. You're going to find the orders with respect to A and B. Now you notice that um, I'm going to erase off the top now for more space. The rate equation for this particular reaction, the rate, is the rate constant Pa to the power m, Pb to the power n. Right? Normally, we express the rate equation in terms of concentration. But because it's a gas phase, we can express concentration. Instead of concentration, we can express in terms of partial pressure. Now, what's the reason for that? Again, going back to the ideal gas law, right? Pv goes to nRT. You find that concentration, which is n over v, is actually P over RT. And this n over v is basically concentration. So concentration is proportional to pressure. So normally we express this thing in terms of concentration, but now we can express in terms of pressure because it's proportional. All right. So our job now in this part b is to find these two numbers, the orders of reaction. Now typically when we see a question like this in exams, um, normally the data that's presented is quite different. Normally what we see in exams is that if there are multiple experiments conducted in this manner, right? We have the partial pressure of A and the partial pressure of B initially. Okay? In fact, these two numbers can be easily obtained from this original table. You notice the partial pressure of A is 3, 6, and 3 kilopascals for the three experiments. Right? The partial pressure of B initially can be taken from the difference between these two numbers because this is a sum of both. This is just A. So the difference between these two is the partial pressure of B initially, where we give 10 minus 3 gives you 7, 13 minus 6 gives you 7, and the last one, 17 minus 3 gives you 14. So this can be derived very easily from the original data. Now the problem is this, is that this particular question, right, it doesn't give you the initial rate. Now we learn from our schools that we normally use the initial rate method like this to solve for the orders of M and N. But you notice that this particular question doesn't give you any initial rate. These numbers are all not available. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to see whether how can we use this table to find the initial rate. Now, if you look at the partial pressure of C, right? The partial pressure of C is equal to P initial minus P total. Which means that for different experiments, we can find this value of PC because we know the P initial, which is this column, and we know the P total, which is this column. Right? The difference between the two columns gives you PC. For example, in experiment 1, the PC value, which is a PC at 25 seconds, is P initial, which is 10, minus 9.8, which is a P total, gives you 0 0.2 kPa. This essentially is the partial pressure of C at the 25th second. Now, since we have this, right, how can we use this to find the initial rate? If you have to plot, if I were to plot the pressure of C versus time, because C is a product, I'll get a graph that's going up from 0. If you notice that at the 25th second, if this is in seconds, the partial pressure of C is known to be 0 0.2 kPa, for example, in experiment 1. Right? So basically, you notice that this data can be calculated from part A, which is a partial pressure of C at the 25th second. We also know that since it's a product, the initial pressure at time equals to 0 is going to be 0. So basically, right, on this, on this product graph, product curve, we essentially have two points. One is initial condition, one is a condition at 25th second. Right? If you were to find, if you need to find the initial rate of the reaction, technically speaking, you should be finding the tangent, the tangent of the graph at time equals to 0. This is actually initial rate. However, you, not you notice, right, this question, the graph is not given. All you have is just this point and this point. This entire graph is not given to you, and this particular graph is not going to be linear. It's going to be a curve, right? So in, in fact, it's going to be quite hard to draw this graph because you only have two points, and it's going to be quite hard to find the initial rate. Now, how are we going to use these two points to find the initial rate? What we can do is you can find something. If we link these two points together, we can find something called the average rate which is what we learned before in physics, right? If you look at the average rate in the first 25 seconds, 
let me come over to this side. Average rate over the first 25 seconds, the 25 seconds, is going to be the change in the y, which is a change in the pressure from initial to the 25 seconds pressure over the 25 seconds. Right? And this will give me the change, the rate over the first 25 seconds. But you notice that this rate is called the average rate. This is called the average rate. The average rate is the average rate between the two points. And this, you notice that this black color line, the average rate, is quite different from the initial rate. Will these two numbers ever be the same so that we can solve this question? Now we learned from before in calculus in mathematics, right? H2 mathematics is that if there is a differential, this is the instantaneous gradient of this graph. And this is called the instantaneous, right? Now, of course, if we were to change this into this graph, then this differential, if I express in the same parameters, becomes change in the PC over change in the time. This is my instantaneous rate, right? This is called instantaneous rate, which is, which is dPC over dt. Uh, we have found actually average rate. Now, what's average rate? Average rate is the change in the PC over change in time. This is called the average rate. Essentially, these two numbers are not the same. We have this number. How are we going to find this number, which is this initial rate, for us to solve this question? Now, you notice one thing is that if this 25 seconds, 0 to 25 seconds, if the time frame is extremely short, for example, if I change it to 12 seconds, I change this point to this point, then basically uh, the 12 seconds, let's say 12 seconds is here, right? Essentially, it's here you'll find that my tangent now between these two points is here, right? This was the average in the 25 seconds. This line is the average in 12 seconds, for example. You'll notice that as the time frame gets shorter and shorter, this point will start to move backwards. And the gradient between these two points becomes steeper and steeper. What happens is that this time frame is very, very short. This gradient gets almost similar as the initial rate. Meaning to say that these two can become the same as your change in time tends to zero. That means if this time frame gets smaller and smaller, then the average rate is almost the same as the instantaneous rate. Now, what's the meaning of this in this particular question? It means this. If you were to have this reaction, I'm going to replot this again, right? And this whole reaction, let's say it takes about an hour to finish. Now, an hour we know is, is going to be 3,600 3, seconds. If it takes 3,600 se seconds to finish, you'll notice that the 25th second is somewhere down here. right? So over here, if the duration of your sampling is very, very short compared to the entire duration of the reaction, you find that the average rate here is almost the same as the instantaneous rate. And that is the assumption we're going to state. Because this question asks you to state assumptions. The assumption is that the duration of this 25 seconds, it's going to be negligible compared to the entire duration of the reaction. When that happens, right, the average rate over the first 25 seconds you saw, is almost the same as instantaneous rate. And therefore, we can put this number, which is the average rate over the first 25 seconds, up here, which is 0 0.2 over 25. And we do the same thing for the second actor experiment. We basically have an initial rate chart. And from here, we can safely go on to find the orders. And this is the interesting part about this question, and that is the initial rate is not given. The initial rate needs to be approximated, approximated from the average rate. Right? So from here, this question can be solved, and that's how we solve this particular question. That's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Remember to visit us at uh, www.focuschemistry.com. Thank you.